So my name is John Jordan, and I come from the province of British Columbia in Canada. Um, this is my colleague, Stephen Curran. We, we work together on this project um, we're going to talk about today. So um, I guess I'll just get started, and uh, we'll have some slides, a demo. We should have some time for some questions. So Ian is also here, our other colleague Ian over here, one of our developers as well. He's a, he's a Hyperledger feature developer. <laughs> So um, what we're going to talk about today is sort of what we're doing in the government of uh, British Columbia and together with some of our um, peer provinces in the country about how we're trying to solve some very long-standing difficult problems. Um, we're going to focus on business services today and we're going to talk about how the government can start to um, do the things that it does today in paper, which is it underpins the economy. So, the, you know, money exists because the government says so, businesses exist because the government registers them and allows them to operate, and the laws and, and so forth of the, of the government uh, allow commerce to occur. But we have no way of doing that in the digital economy. Right now, um, there's no business models in the digital economy other than basically buying stuff and getting your data exploited for advertising. Um, so, if you have a Visa card, you're in. Otherwise, there's no other really interesting transactions going on. And I think a big part of that is because we don't have any way of extending the trust of government into the digital realm in a way that is trustworthy. So we're going to talk about that. Um, this is our fun slide. This is where we're from, Canada. We have a variety of animals, quite a lot of space. Um, we come from Victoria, BC. Um, I, norm I actually grew up in Ottawa, which is around the beaver. Um, people think that's kind of humorous. but uh, So there you go. That's our... That's uh, where we're from. Um, I also want to acknowledge that um, I do all this work I do, I do with uh, um, Carol Prest, who is the registrar for BC. So I've been there for a couple years, and from day one, we've been working together, exploring how can we use the registry data as the foundational data for doing business. Um, and unfortunately, she's not available. She's in India right now. But um, having this business partnership and having her and her organization behind this and having the discipline of trying to solve problems for business people is what is making this project, I think, really fun and also useful. So we're going to focus on a problem here, which is how do we help small business? Um, we have sort of a, a, an example of Mary's Bakery, but it could be any kind of business, construction, mining, whatever it is. Um, and the problem is that these business people um, are very excited about starting a business. It's an exciting time in life, but um, they don't realize sometimes that they have quite a lot of uh, obligations that they must fulfill for government. So we have uh, examples where um, our research teams have gone out and talked to restauranters, and they have uh, leased a building and so forth. It's the perfect spot. Everything is great. And then they realize, oh, I've got six months of permits and licenses to do because they have to bring it up to building code, and they didn't realize this and that, and there's all these dependencies. And they weren't ready to fund that building for six months. So those are like real stories. We'd like to try and minimize that kind of stuff because we want them to start their businesses and grow. Um, you know, the path is also very meandering, and it can be in multiple different media. You can be faxing, you could be email, you could be online, you're in person, and so forth. And so all of this is a very difficult, uh, both for the business people, but also on the government side. We are also, in, in different places, verifying data all the time. Who are you? What business are you representing? Are you authorized to represent the business? Is, um, in the most complicated cases for like liquor and so forth, um, shareholders and employees have criminal background checks. They make sure that nobody owns more than eight stores that sells liquor and so forth and so on. So that can take up to a year. So what do we do? Um, well, one of the things we're doing is we're collaborating with our peers in a couple of other jurisdictions. So we're working with a team in Ontario and a team in the Government of Canada where I used to work, the Procurement Agency. And uh, when we say working together, we're actually writing code together. There's no MOUs, no steering committees, no working groups. They have a couple devs and a business person. We have a couple devs and a business person. We sprint together, write code. All of the stuff we're going to show you today has been co-developed. Um, and significant portions have been done by each of the groups. This is the journey that we'd like to enable. It's a journey that we know well. Um, government gives you something, you take that something to another institution, you use it to prove something, and you get, and you get the outcome. So in this case, it's the incorporation information that's given to Mary, she goes to the bank and she can open a bank account. Um, turns out that that's a very general pattern 
And this is the pattern that we see in the sort of verifiable credentials realm. So we have this pattern of uh, a holder, which is a person or a business, but a business can't really hold something on their own, so they have to have people holding it on behalf of the business. Um, they present it to a, a verifier, uh, which is earlier in the sort of workflow. They have to decide, uh, you know, the verifier says, bring your list of things in and prove, uh, prove to me who you are, and you have various permits and licenses and so forth. Um, at that point, you then get to enter their form, which is usually not that pleasant, <laughs> go through a process, and then you are issued something which you hold. Um, and so this is the pattern that we're very familiar with. We're sitting with a, you know, a wallet full of these things. I have bank cards and identity cards and so forth. And we're going to explore how we can do that. So when we discovered that, we were pretty excited. It was about a year ago that we uh, stumbled across Hyperledger Indie after having done a little bit of work with Fabric. And um, you know, so it was just Stephen and I on the team. And we thought, you know, that looked promising, that, that there was this pattern here where it could solve some of these hard problems we've been working on for years. But we realized um, we didn't have any of these software for these different organizations or people. Like there was no, somebody mentioned it this morning, the, the classic chicken and egg problem. We don't have any software out there that we can issue to. Our issuers don't have software to issue and so forth. Um, but. So we had, a, we had an idea, actually. We, uh, we realized, actually, in this case, government is a little bit special, which I don't like to say very often. But it turns out our core business is issuing. That's what we do. Um, every service we have is pretty much an issuer. So we thought, hmm, what if we, what if we could give the services that we are dealing with in the business realm somewhere to issue to? We, we had purposely picked business realm because if we're dealing with business data, we're not triggering all the personal identifiable information problems. So, you know, all the, all in the BC, we call it FOIPA, the Freedom of Information Act and Privacy Protection Act. Um, and when you get into personal data, of course, it triggers all of that, which is, which is good, but it makes it very complicated to play with new technologies. So we're just dealing with open business data right now. And we thought, what if we could create something where these issuers could you know, issue this data to, and it would be a public thing. And we call that, you know, the org book. So this is a bootstrapping technique that we're copying from Facebook, really, which is to say that we're just playing with one side of the market. We're going to deal with the supply side of the market, the issuers of credentials, or, you know, more commonly known as permits and licenses. And because they're public and because they're open, we can do that and, and create this directory of uh, searchable, verifiable data. And we can build software for the issuers. So our goal was, how can we make it as easy as possible for existing services to be able to issue their credentials to this org book, starting with the foundational data of the registry? And we're going to show you that. So when we, uh, when we figured that out and we started writing this code uh, built on top of Hyperledger Indy, we, um, we, we realized that there could be some intermediate benefits here. So first, there's some public good in the searching and finding of data, and we'll show you that. But it turns out we can also create APIs and so forth to allow that data to be searchable. And we created a, an agent, I guess we call it, an enterprise agent, for services to be able to verify the data in the org book and issue it. So later, when businesses have their own ser services for holding verifiable credentials, our issuers are ready. So now I'm going to hand it over to Stephen. I'm going to drive, and we're going to give you Now, am I, is that working? OK. Um, so we'll show. I can look here. That's good. Um, so this is what the org book looks like in British Columbia. So there's two instances, and we'll show you them both. But this is the British Columbia org book. And it's basically a kind of a Yelp type uh, 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 site. We've got 525,000 active legal entities in British Columbia. Every one of them has a record in here. They have the credentials that the registries have issued to them. So let's do a search. We're into chocolate because we're in Switzerland. So we'll talk about a island, Vancouver Island uh, chocolatier. So Purdy's chocolates. So we can take a look at them. So search capability, names. Um, we've got other capabilities for what searches we can provide. Um, ways to filter and things. But when we get into it, we can see um, some information that the registry publishes. So previously, um, 
register, this is all public data, this is all open data, this is exactly what they hang on their walls inside the restaurant and things like that. Um, there's really no place in BC, it is actually published, but in a very obscure place, very difficult to find. So we've actually, as a byproduct of doing this exercise, created um, a pretty useful facility for um, citizens to use to find businesses. Um, so we can take a look at them. Uh, this one has uh, a couple of um, credentials. They actually have a, a corporate entity and then a couple of um, names they do business under. So uh, they've got several credentials. We can see a timeline of when they got the different credentials. So we can take a look at those and, it, and as the history builds up. We haven't loaded all the history of all BC companies yet. Some of that is on paper, which is going to be more challenging, but that's, that's not for us to worry about. Um, but we can load them up. So if we can look at our, the registration, uh, we can see an active credential. So this is what a credential looks like online. Um, basically, we present it with the key data that uh, a person might be interested in. And then at the bottom, we can actually go into the, uh, the credential from an Indy, uh, Hyperledger Indy perspective. So this is the schema, if you, uh, as they call it, on the one side the populated data for this particular version of the credential. And then down below, we get some really fun stuff. Um, this allows any citizen to go and do the cryptography on paper themselves to prove that this is a uh, proven credential. What do we do with the computer? Yeah, and we say verified. See the check up there? That's the, that's the key. OK, um, I think that's most of what we wanted to show. So the idea here um, that we wanted to talk about a little bit was the title of this was production. Um, this is a production system. We've been live since um, 1st of September, basically, and it's actually the 10th of September, and there's a little story there. So let's go back to the home page, and let me talk about a couple of things there. Um, the current statistics. Um, those are actual statistics. We actually recreated the um, credentials and loaded them uh, this week, so that's why 2.6 million were issued this week. Um, we can do that. Uh, the first weekend in September when we loaded it, it took 10 days to load the credentials, so that kind of wasn't too good. We had Ontario coming behind us with um, about five times as many credentials, so we were kind of a little nervous. Um, so we did a couple of sprints, two sprints to um, basically scale up the capabilities of it. Um, BC Gov, which has the developers exchange, is a pretty progressive um, environment for developing code. And so we've got a uh, Red Hat OpenShift Kubernetes-based platform. So basically, we were able to um, use the capabilities of that platform to just spin up other instances and be able to scale up the, um, the speed of loading and things like that. So we got up to, we're now about 12 hours to load the full data set. So we're creating, issuing, um, and holding about 2,600 credentials per minute. Um, so decent speed. It's kind of weird because um, we are a single holder for all of these organizations. These don't, the organizations don't have their own wallet. And the first vision and the first thing that Indy wanted to support was the idea of a person having a wallet. So the database behind it was not the most scalable uh, solution out of the box. So the next thing we did as well to, to make it scalable was to implement a, an enterprise grade wallet with Postgres. Uh, Ian uh, was a developer on that and we were pleased that yesterday um, his code was merged into um, the Indy SDK repo. So it's now officially uh, Hyperledger code which is kind of cool. So that's a contribution we've made to the, um, to the ecosystem in, in Hyperledger Indy. Yep, so the next piece that I want to talk about was the search. So one of the things you're seeing is, um, this is a BC site, um, but it's really g very generic. So what we've tried to do is make it completely agnostic of what the actual credentials that will be loaded in. We do have the concept that it's a, a, an organization so we've got names. Um, we have addresses, the concept of addresses. We have the concept of credential types. We have the concept of dates in there. But other than that, the structure is whatever the issue or happens to issue. So it's very flexible for others to use. Um, so that search that's up there is, uh, 
you know, it was a decent amount of work, uses solar and, and, and so on, but um, is very generic so that other entities, other jurisdictions can take this and basically spin up their own instance of this relatively easily using this code and be able to take advantage of the loading, the naming, the searching, the display, all of, the dis um, all of that is flexible and localized, localizable. Uh, let's take a look at the Ontario one. So the Ontario workbook looks quite different from BC's. Obviously the search panel is the same. Um, they have uh, different things they want to show and what they, they don't want to show. So for example, in, in uh, Ontario, they didn't want to show the structure of a company. They actually have uh, contracted charges for that, so they weren't able to do that through this. So every entity and every doing business as is a separate um, entity on this. So because we were building with multiple um, jurisdictions in mind right from the start, we've, we've built it to be pretty flexible and, and so you're able to um, construct it on your own, um, have your own skinning, uh, language support, there's multiple language support is in there built in already. I think those were the main things. Got the list. What's that? Yeah, so um, some of the, th two more things that I wanted to touch on. Come to our workshop on Friday and Saturday and what we're actually doing is building out issuers and verifiers. So this is the org book, the central piece, but what really is important is there's an API behind all this that a issuer of permits can use to um, learn about the company, to fetch the credentials that are already there and have them proven, and then issue credentials back to the org book. So um, a key part of this is that being easily able to extend this to many more um, permits and licensing providers. Um, could be within the government, which we're working with. We've already had, I mean, basically almost every project team we talk to says, oh, we can use that. Um, so we're building that out and trying to make that as easy as possible. So our workshop on Friday involves building an issuer verifier and actually deploying it out so you can create your issue, your own credentials. Um, the other side of it that we think is going to be really uh, important is um, while this is a bootstrapping mechanism, we've realized there can be some life to this in that um, we're, going to we're going to be creating a, um, a PubSub a subscription service basically so that a business that gets a credential and verifies it can subscribe to that credential in the future and get notified when it changes. So, a big challenge in all government organizations is this ability to understand when things change. And we think this can be a super light way for a business to get um, notified that, hey, these two businesses just merged. Um, they've started a new entity. Those two um, entities no longer exist. They've been dissolved and this new entity exists. You should know that. And um, so that, that webhook capability will just whatever you're um, subscribed to, when, the, when a credential changes, we can notify you that it happened and then you can dig in to figure out how that affects your permit and licensing service. Um, the other piece that we'll show is a thing called uh, decentralized flow, dflow. So do you want to go to that? Okay. Spicy wings. We're going to look at spicy wings. So this is our dev site. Um, so we're... Um, this is just new that we're playing with. So this is a company that's got four different, um, uh, four different credentials from different organizations. They've got a registration, a PST, that's a tax number from the province, um, a clearance letter for workman's compensation for workers' insurance, and a business license from, a, from an entity, from a municipality. So with DFLOW, what we can do is um, basically what you're saying is I have a goal as a businessman, I have a goal that I want a business license in the city of Surrey and it's going to be for a restaurant. What have I got to do to accomplish that? What other things do I need? And what, we're, what we've built here is a dynamic workflow that um, starts with the one you want. I want a business license and sort of says, oh, what are the prerequisites for getting a business license? Well, that's been um, in captured in the proof requests that the business requires before it will um, issue you the credential that they have to offer. So we can look at that proof request and then 
iteratively go back to that proof request and walk back a step and walk back a step all the way back until we get to the starting point. And now we can display dynamically um, what does that company need in order to get a business license, their, their goal, and then what have they already got that allows them to proceed. So basically this company, the ones in blue, they already have and they can take a look at it. The ones in yellow, they're able to acquire now because they have all the prerequisites. They haven't got it yet, but they have the prerequisites for it. And the ones in red, they don't have the prerequisites. They're just going to get rejected. So no need to start in on those already. So this will, uh, the nice thing about this is all of these entities that are issuing credentials, that are issuing uh, permits and licenses, don't have to know the whole journey. That, that's really hard to figure out. All they have to know is what their prerequisites are. And as soon as they express those in the form of a proof request, we can dynamically walk that chain and figure out what, what else they need. Compare that with what's in their wallet, what credentials they already have, and now we can give them a picture of where they are. All right, have we got a minute? Um, so another piece of... Okay, so one of the things we're gonna do in the workshop is um, in spinning up uh, your issuer verifier is you'll have to connect to and create uh, entity, uh, transactions on uh, indie um, blockchain, on a, on a distributed ledger. So um, the... Where did it go? So this is a tool we created to be able to browse the network. So we can look at, in this case, the four node network that we've got running. We can look at the status of it. We can do some operations, like look at the Genesis transaction. But we can also dig in and look at what are the transactions that actually exist on the ledger at this time. So we can do some searching for things and find all the ones that have tax in the name we can search by type, so in this case, we're looking for schema. So this gives you a really good way of actually being able to see what is on the ledger, um, you know, get an idea as you uh, register an issue or verifier, take a look at what's there, okay? We have more slides. We do. Okay. We don't want to miss the slides. That's true. Okay. Um, ooh, um, right, so back to the slides. So um, that's kind of a preview of, of the site and the uh, ideas that have been emerging as a result of um, our work, um, but there's a little bit more. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is to build, you know, this, we, it's helpful for BC businesses, but BC businesses do business all around the world and we want, you know, our businesses to be able to interact digitally with everybody else. Um, and like Stephen mentioned, it's not just businesses, but it's professionals and so forth and so on. This model could work for professional engineering societies, medical societies, other kinds of things that have public accreditation that you need to check on. This is a, this is a model that could work. So we have this idea where we think, you know, Orgbook helps us establish like our local neighborhood. So the idea is businesses are gaining their credentials and, um, and that's kind of building up our, our local ecosystem. And that makes it easier for us to help them find their way, like we just demonstrated, because each of these issuers are going to automatically be able to express digitally the preconditions that are necessary for them to be able to uh, allow you into their service and, and, and issue you a new permit. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and as a result of this learning, we've, um, we've come up with the, this generalized model that has been accepted as a sub-project of uh, Indy. So we're calling that Indy Catalyst because this is sort of a bootstrapping uh, capability. And that'll comprise of the code behind the org book in a more generalized fashion and, um, and the code behind the issuer verifier service that we've built, which we call Von X, but we'll give some other sub-named as an Indy Catalyst component. Um, and the big reason behind this is because, you know, we, I, you know, like I work for the government of BC, we're not a software development agency. We're, you know, serving the public. Um, and also we want this sort of to be part of a global capability and 
having a sustainable set of software in a, in a, in a, in a well-governed organization like the Hyperledger Linux Foundation, we think is a, is a good way to go. Um, and so we think that as over time, um, these neighborhoods as they grow, hopefully, um, will, be, will create what we call the verifiable organization network. So this is sort of a concept where if you can use these kinds of tools, and it doesn't have to be Hyperledger ND, it could be any system that is sort of decentralized identifier, verifiable credential compliant, you'll be able to exchange verifiable data amongst businesses, and that is really what we want to be able to do. It's nice that they could come and do business with us, like get the things they need, but what's really more important is that they transact amongst themselves. That's where the economy lives. So that's the idea of um, the Verifiable Organization Network and the um, coming code that we'll call Hi Hyperledger Indie Catalyst. So that is our talk for now. As, I, as Stephen mentioned, we're having a workshop uh, Friday and Saturday morning, and um, Ian and Stephen, and I'll do my best to help. Um, we'll walk you through actually creating an issuer, creating schemas, and, um, and, and do doing your own decentralized workflow example. So we're happy to take questions if there are any. Yes? I think, I think it's controlled by the uh, center there. Hello. Okay. Um, just wanted to check any pre-request uh, for the workshop, any required software, uh, any components oh, needs to be installed beforehand? You need a browser okay. and you need uh, a Docker Hub ID, but you know, you could do that while you're there. Yeah, so the prerequisites are yeah, a Docker Hub ID and then um, everything else can be done in a browser yeah. and we'll just, we've got all the, the guidance and so on, but you don't need anything else other than the browser. I think Chrome is ideal, right? Chrome is probably the best. We're using a tool called Play with Docker, so you don't have to install anything on your machine. It's super cool. Uh, thanks. I, I promise no biometrics. No, <laughs> so you did mention uh, yeah, the verifiable um, uh, claim, and you, you uh, implied um, uh, standards. Uh, and I just want to confirm you know, with the audience here, uh, because we had a side discussion. Right. So it's W3C compliant verifiable claims. And then, and so I, I want to ask about the, uh, the other uh, adjuncts to that, the, the registrar and the verifier, because you talk about those concepts, but I'm trying to understand like what um, standards you use or what you're developing on your own and, and what standards uh, apply to specifically the registrar and the, and the verifier. Right. right. So um, right now, it's Hyperledger Indie version of things. Um, but as they progress, they'll, they'll create DID uh, doc specs and, the, and verifiable credential base. But that's still emerging, right? Um, in terms of how like the agents communicate, um, we're actually contributing quite a bit to sort of this agent to agent protocol. Um, and that's being done in the open as well, right now in the sort of Hyperledger Indie working groups. But um, we go, we, like we want interoperability, so we'd like our citizens to have a choice, so they could use a DID method of their choice, they could use software um, of their choice. Uh, when it gets to personal uh, data or, or business data, we think if that's where the marketplace will provide options for citizens and businesses, like the holder software. So um, whatever standards emerge, we would want to support those. And we're helping shape some of those as well. So yeah. there isn't a specific standard for the agent-to-agent -agent protocol, but it's a collaboration um, with the Decentralized Identity Foundation and the W3C folks and the Hyperledger folks. Yeah, one of the things we thought about, um, as, as John alluded to early in the talk was, oh, we're gonna build this thing and our organizations are gonna use our agent and they're gonna talk to our uh, issuers and verifiers and we're going to build all this stuff and then we realize no this is not what we should be doing we shouldn't be in the business of doing that we need to be in the business of issuing credentials so we have to build software for that we need to make do it in a way that allows them to change as little as they need to we don't want them to have to re recreate their world we want them to just be an adjunct on just like they use a printer to print the um, verified credential, the permit or the license so they can hang it on the wall. We just want them to stamp out a digital version of that that's signed um, cryptographically. Right. Um, 
And one of the things I say about that is like, so this piece of software that we've written up, and we sort of, we take it for granted now, but everything we've done is in the open. Every line of code, every yeah. presentation, every ticket, it's all in GitHub. So it's all Apache 2. Um, and as I mentioned, we're contributing to the Hyperledger thing. But um, sort of the line I say is like, if your system can produce a CSV of your permit or license data, then you're in. The, our box will take care of the rest. And you'll learn on the workshop that it's just an hour or two to configure that thing to make it work for you, and, and that's how much work it takes kind of thing. So it's, we're trying to make it as easy as possible because we're from government. We know like it's basically impossible to do IT things. So we wanted to like, you know, make that as simple as possible. Answer your question? Yeah. Well, I didn't want to dominate, but yeah, you, you kind of mentioned it. So that the wallet where this goes in, there is no, you don't have the concept of a, uh, of that wallet because it's all in the open. In this case, the org book is the wallet. Right, yeah. right, OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the issuer is issued to it. But it'll be using the same protocols in the future to issue to individual wallets, which is the demand side. Right. That, that sort of goes closely to the question I was going to ask, which is one of the points of blockchain is usually to have nodes under the control of multiple entities. Where are the actual nodes right now? I, from what I understand, they're all under the control of the, the BC government. But so the, I mean, could there be, like, for instance, like an NGO holding onto one of the nodes? Yeah, the production, get, you know? the production system is using the sovereign network to store the DID. So there's a DID and a schema and a cred def, you know, credential definition and yeah. on there. Um, but again, um, in theory, that could be another DID network. It's just there aren't any other DID networks that are. Yeah, that so we're not going to run the network. We, don't uh, want to we run may the run a yet. node, but we're not running the network. Yeah. Um, the, the thing you remember with verifiable credentials is they don't go on the ledger. So none of the data about the organizations or about individuals goes on the ledger. It all goes into a wallet. The weird thing we're doing is we've got this community wallet concept, but once people have their own wallet, we'll be issuing to their wallet directly. We won't. Uh, we may continue to issue to our own community wallet, but uh, for public um, credentials, but for any other, for the credentials, once they have a wallet, we'll be issuing to that wallet, and they will be able to use it wherever they need to use it in whatever jurisdiction has systems that allow it. We've got competing. Just a quick question. Uh, are you also planning to, like, develop a, a wallet that an individual business We'd holder can actually use? We'd prefer not to. Okay. <laughs> We'd prefer you, you guys. Um, <laughs> we're always on the We're search. always looking. <laughs> um, we're collab we are doing some collaboration with some folks from Spark Telecom New Zealand that have a pretty nice implementation. And we're using that as an opportunity to uh, develop the early version of the agent-to-agent -agent protocol that's generalized. Um, but we're, we would be happy to hear of others. We've done thoughts on that, so as soon as we get code, that map we had originally that just had Ontario and, and Ottawa on it, will expand to include New Zealand. So we're looking forward to that and others. The schema you used for business registration, is that something that came from a standard about business registration or Ontario's doing the same one, so did you guys just like get together in a dark room and create it or New well, Zealand? I mean, what happens with that? Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a schema that we co-created with Canada and Ontario, but um, we also looked at like standards in Canada that have evolved. Like I've been in it's this business like for a very... It's not an ISO one, no. No. No, no. no, no, there isn't such a thing in the world for that, for businesses other than like maybe schema.org, but it's really not sufficient. Yeah. Um, so we evolved it together um, and so far, it's working. Uh, you know, you kind of—it's very—it's a bit tricky to get like the minimal set, but. Um, yeah. But again, this helped with having multiple jurisdictions involved. Yeah. So we didn't just do our. We had a first. We did one. Ontario did one, and we went. Wait, this isn't going to work. We don't want that. Um, we're both Canadian entities. We should be able to figure that out, and that worked pretty well. And then the other side of it was once we got into things like the the doing business as well. That's totally uncharted territory. No, not really yeah. been done, and. Um, we came up with something, Ontario came up with something even better, and, and we balanced back and forth to figure out what a, um, uh, it's, a it's actually a relationship credential, so yeah. we can have it point both ways. The interesting thing there, the thought process was a lot around 
we originally started, oh, you know, how's the org book going to show this and all that, and then we realized, no, that's not the right thinking. What the thinking is, is what is the business going to want to do with this? What do they have to prove to somebody else? And that's how you look at how, how to build a credential, is you stick it in the wallet of a, of a business, in this case, or a person, and figure out, okay, they've got to prove this to show that they're a partnership to the bank. How are they going to do that? And that's the sort of mindset we had in building credentials. Yeah, so we built this, so that's where the relationship credential came from, which is, I was very happy about, because it's basically the edge in a graph. So Drummond will like that idea. But uh, so the registration <laughs> credentials are the nodes, and this is a credential that demonstrates a linkage between the nodes of an owning, the doing business as name, but that, that those labels could be changed to is a director or is a beneficiary or any kind of relationship can be modeled this way between two things. And so that generalizes the model to basically whatever you want, um, which also gives it interesting properties in terms of visualization and analysis and relationship uh, recommendation engines and that kind of stuff. So that was fun. Hospital systems. Um, <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Man Reed here. Uh, you know, that's an interesting thing is that, um, you know, like if you look at, you know, College of Physicians and Surgeons and other kind of public statements, by, you know, engineering societies, they publish these things already, so they can have a version of this. And then that just becomes part of the overall ecosystem so that you can, for example, have a prescription issued by a doctor to a patient that patient brings the prescription to a pharmacy, the pharmacy asks proof, but at the same time can look at that credential and say, oh, I'm gonna look up that doctor in, this, in the public, um, you know, verify, in public doc hub, or whatever the heck they call it. <laughs> um, and, the and, and they can subscribe to those things too, so they can always know if is that doctor currently licensed, maybe that doctor has a restriction on the kinds of things they can prescribe. So I think it's like, it's a, it's complementary to the peer-to-peer -peer transaction when you have these public sort of hubs of trusted data. We don't have them loaded today, no. Like we, Come we, to the workshop, we can build yeah. that. <laughs> Another interesting one we're looking at is um, evident Evidence. So um, another function in the pr provincial government is mining inspections, things like this. So inspectors go out into the field, out like offline, and they are recording videos, taking pictures, making notes, and so forth. And they would like to be able to be use data that they gather five or ten years from now and be able to answer the question definitively, it was this person using this device on this place at this time, and it, data was unaltered. Well, that's a credential you could have their phone app issue a credential to an internal hub of like this, and you know, 10 years from now, when there's a court case, they can, use, they can just ask for a proof from it. And at that point, we know that it's unaltered, and, and we know who it was, and we know what version it was, and what chunk of binary data was hashed in there, and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna do an experiment with that. That could be quite an interesting pattern. All right. We're just about done. Any other questions? Or? Great, well, hopefully some of you will come for a workshop and uh, thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>